Hello everyone. Um, I actually wasn't going to make this video yet. Um, I bought some parts. It was meant to be for a future episode or at least a job that I wasn't ready to do yet. But I'll be honest, I opened the box and I was too buzzing. So I thought I'll just make a video on it. Um, it is relevant. There is a reason why I'm telling you about this now as well. Um, but basically I bought a rear anti-roll bar for the Cinquecento Turbo. Now, for those of you who don't know much about Fierce Turbos, you may be thinking, why is that such a big deal? Rear anti roll bar? Meh. Well, I'm going to tell you now that it wasn't an option on the Cinquecento, so there is no fitment for it whatsoever. Um, there's a few different designs going around. There's plenty of people just sort of working on their own version of this. Um, but I've laid mine out on the table and I'll explain um, the fitment of it and then the general gist of the improvements I'm hoping it's going to make. Okay, and here it is. So this is the general setup. So this is actually an anti-roll bar off an MGTF. Um, it's been shortened massively, so you can see this section here where it's been welded. Um, I will put specs for this in the uh, the comments, or at least I'll try and put as much spec as I've got on it. Um, but it does take out quite a large chunk of it. Now I will, at some point, be grinding this back um, and painting it in the same uh, hammered finish that some of the rear suspension, like the bracket, the bumper components, something, stuff like that. So um, it will look a lot better than this eventually. Um, but the other things you basically need are uh, these which are effect effectively just these little like swivel um, swivel eye joints. Um, and the nice thing about this setup is it's actually adjustable. So you'll see here they've got the bolts. So what you what you can do is uh, you can shorten or lengthen this arm to make it stiffer or softer, which is perfect. So I'll probably start with this on a really soft setting initially and then just build up the stiffness on it until it gives the sort of handling that I like. Now, um, to actually explain how this fits. So these are just anti-roll bar bushes. These are actually uh, strong flex uh, polyurethane ones. I've got these on the front anti roll bars. Um, I've got some of their um, gearbox mounts and stuff as well, so they're really good. Um, so you get a set of those, and you get these horseshoe brackets. Now, what these effectively do is clamp round the back of the rear beam, so the beam that runs across the back of the car. Um, they clamp onto there, and if I just show you quickly, now what this effect, all this really is doing, is giving you a platform to mount these, because it just these just slide onto the actual anti roll bar itself with some good old grease, never forget to put that on there because they'll squeak like mad. Um, but these will go on like that, so if you imagine that slid onto the anti-roll bar, this will go around the back of the beam, and then when you actually tighten the whole lot up, it clamps it onto the beam and then tightens that into place. So um, that actually secures it to the car, and then these bolt through either end, like that, and then the other end bolts, it's obviously the wrong way around, it's upside down. The other end bolts to the bottom of the actual shock. So I need to get some longer bolts uh, for the bottom of the shock and to get some strong bolts from the bottom of here. But then obviously as you shorten the length of this, the amount of suspension that has to travel before it does something um, effectively makes it stiffer or, or um, softer. Now obviously what this means is that not, not only is it going to make my uh, suspension like setup a lot more adjustable, in theory, I should be able to get this car now riding or handling that suits my style of driving. Now, I quite like it if the back end of a front wheel drive car steps out a little bit, but not too much. I had an old uh, turbo mini. If you came off the gas, like it would just sort of kick the back just a tiny bit, but not enough to scare the hell out of you. So I'm kind of hoping um, that it's going to give me enough, enough adjustability to be able to get that kind of characteristics in the car. Um, I'll be honest with you, though. Uh, the only downside to this is I know what's going to happen because I'm going to put it on this one. It's going to be awesome and I'm going to want to put one on the slug as well. But, you know, at least I've got the spec now and I know what to expect. I know what bits to build on it. Um, but anyway, the reason I am telling you this now is, as I mentioned, this effectively sits um, along the rear beam. And I'm going to put a picture up now to show you how this actually fits to the car um, when it's mint. And this is actually courtesy of, I think, Nick um, from one of our Facebook groups. Now, as you'll see, it, um, like I said, it, it sits a little bit lower to the actual beam. And as you know, I'm building an exhaust for this at the moment that goes dead center and under the rear beam. Um, so what I want to do is now is to loosely bolt it up to the beam, get it all roughly where it needs to go to make sure that when I finish that last little dip under the beam, that it doesn't hit this. Because the last thing I want is to have to redo the exhaust or not run this just because the back box hits it. Um, so I thought, you know what, it's a perfect chance for me to actually take you through the setup um, and then that way I can just, uh, you know, let the cat out of the bag and not worry about it too much. But, um, I mean, I hope you find it interesting because anybody out there who's thinking of getting their Cinquecento handling really well, which I'll be honest, it's probably more important than making it fast because, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun with a car that handles well. Um, if you have any questions about this at all, I mean, I'm really new to it, but I mean, by all means, ping them in there and I'll try and find the answers out, even if I just direct you to the group uh, and you can fire the questions at them. But um, very much a learning curve for me. We'll get it tested um, and then you'll see it as I go. So when we start hitting the track in this next year, 
um, we'll see how much of a difference it makes. I may even do a little bit of a comparison, unbolt it, drive it around the track a few times, bolt it back up and then see how much better we can make it. But um, that's enough for now. Just a very, very quick pit stop. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with episode three or part three of the turbo exhaust build. I'm hoping in the next few days, um, I'm just waiting on a few uh, 45 degree angle to turn up and a few other little bits. And then hopefully we can hear what my eight valve turbo sounds like when it's running, he says <clears throat> confidently. Um, but thanks a lot for stopping by. Um, I know I don't know how these pit stops go down, but um, I just love doing the off little video every now and again. I get withdrawal symptoms. Can't be doing all this work on the car and not doing videos. Um, but that's enough for me. Thanks a lot for dropping by. I'll catch you soon.